Hello and welcome to Bite My Pie, the channel where we sink our teeth into all things tech. In this video we're going to look at backing up, the job no one wants to do but everyone should be doing. To ease the pain of this tedious process we'll be using some fantastic free software called Duplicati. This will allow us to automate our backups, helping to end the needless suffering this task can cause. So if this sounds appealing to you, stick around. Right, so to do our backing up we're going to need that software I talked about in the introduction. So we're going to open our web browser and on Google we can browse for Duplicati and it's this one, Duplicati.com. So if we click on that and here we've got the option at the top, download Duplicati and it's currently version 2.0. Now, as you can see on this screen, we've got multiple versions available. So Duplicati is free open source and cross-platform. So the top option here is Windows, but we've also got options for various flavors of Linux and Mac OS as well. So click on the one that you need. So for us, it's going to be Windows. Okay, so the eagle-eyed amongst you might have already noticed that this latest version is technically classed as a beta but there's nothing to worry about, it's perfectly stable. Um, Duplicati go through various phases of testing. Uh, if we were to look down here in the other sections part of the, the website, uh, you, you'd see that there are canary builds which you really don't want to be touching. They're right, right at the, the bleeding edge, so full of bugs. There's experimental which is the next step on, so there a little bit more stable but um, still not really ready for prime time and then it goes to beta um, so it, it's perfectly fine to to download and install whether the the latest version is is classed as a, a beta or, or just a, a standard release of, of Duplicati um, go with whatever the the latest download is um, for Windows or, or your platform from the download screen so that being said, we can come across and click the save button and download that. And there we go, it's downloaded so we can close the web browser. Okay, so let's start the installation. So if we open File Explorer and bring that across, let's go to our downloads directory and there we have it, Duplicati. Let's double click that to launch the installer, you can close that window and click next to begin the wizard. It's free and open source software so let's accept the license agreement by ticking the box there and clicking next and it's going to install the core files for the program itself and also install an option to launch it on startup which is a good idea because we want this as it's a backup that we're going to set to automatically do our backups it's a good idea for it to be launching on startup and running on the the background in the background to do its job so let's click next on the install and then we can click the install button to begin and click yes to allow the prompt and there we go and nice and quick, all done like that. I'll just take the tick out of there for now, but you can leave it and launch automatically straight away and click finish. Right, so you can see it's put a nice icon on the desktop handily for us. So if we double click that to launch the software and in a moment it should open. Here we go. You may have noticed already it's actually opening in a web browser and the reason for that is that Duplicati actually runs its own local web server. And the reason that that's so handy is working through a web browser it gives us the opportunity to access it throughout our home local network on other devices if we so wish. So if you look here at the centre of the screen in the first run setup it's asking us if the machine we're installing it on is in a multi-user environment. So in other words, does is there more than one user account on this computer? Um, 
because if that's the case you've got the option here to set a password on Duplicati so that other users can't access your backups and therefore your data if you don't want them to be able to so if it's just yourself you can choose no machine my machine only has a single account but if you want to lock it down a bit more for security um, which is what I'm going to guide through here we're going to click yes and obviously you'd want to put a password on Duplicati as well if you were intending to make it accessible across your home network so let's do that now we just tick the box next to password and let's enter my super secure password and here's the checkbox where if you did want it to be accessible across your home network on any machine uh, you would tick this box here to allow remote access I'm not going to do that for the purpose of this video but that's where it is um, here you can tick this box if you don't want the tray icon to automatically log in um, to Duplicati so basically just for a bit more security but this is for your account obviously so it wouldn't let somebody else log into Duplicati on another account it's just for yours so if, if you're happy that you're the only one who uses your account and that's good enough security for you then as is the case for me in this video I'm not going to tick that option okay next down the list you can delay the amount of time it takes before Duplicati actually runs properly on startup um, not totally sure unless your machine was slow and old that would help it speed up the boot process and not put any extra load on during boot and then you can have Duplicati boot a bit later but other than that I'm not sure why you'd want to um, the user interface settings so here you can change the the language if you need to uh, you can change the uh, theme so I mean if you're into these dark themes that everybody seems to love these days you can change that here or alternatively you can just leave it on the default white theme you can turn donation messages on or off because obviously this is uh, free software um, there's also an option up here at the top right to make a donation so next on the settings list we've got the update channel so you can see by default it's selected the same as the base install version so it's on the the beta channel you could also, if you're feeling brave or foolish, go with um, experimental or canary builds. But basically you want to leave it on the, the default option for stability. Then we have usage statistics. So by default it sends information to the developers. You can choose what you would like to send or if you don't want to send anything at all you can select none disabled. And then lastly we've got the default options so there's all these advanced options on this list that you could add into your settings but um, we can just leave it on uh, the defaults here and when you've done all that we can click OK. Right now that's all the settings taken care of so we can go back to the home screen and you'll see at the moment it's completely empty because obviously we haven't created any backups yet so let's set to and get that done so let's go to add a backup and before we start the new backup wizard at this point if you're going to use a USB attached device like I am I'm going to use a stick but obviously if you were doing this you probably want to use an external USB drive uh, for its larger capacity you need to make sure that it's connected to your computer first before you go through this backup wizard because the computer needs to be able to detect where you're going to put the backup obviously um, so that it shows up when we get to that point so I'm going to pop the USB stick into the computer now and there we go so oh, got a problem with it that's a good start let's just scan that to fix the issue and repair the drive okay so now hopefully we can open our USB drive so that's good right so there's nothing on there so as you can see it's ready to go so that being the case I can go with the default option of configure a new backup because this option here import from a file it's a nice little touch in Duplicati if you've gone through and set up your backups previously 
and then for some reason you needed to set them up again if you'd exported the configuration you could then import it into this setup rather than having to set them all up manually again so we obviously haven't done that but if you had this is where you'd do it from a file now obviously we're going to go with configure a new backup and click next right so let's start by giving our backup a name and i'm going to go with the highly original backup optionally you can give it a description and then you'll note by default that duplicati is going to encrypt it with aes256 encryption now if you didn't want that you can turn it off but as it tells you it's not really a good idea as the backup's going to be outside of your computer obviously the whole point of a backup is that it's not on your computer that's somewhere safe external um, that being the case you don't want someone laying their hands on it and being able to easily access your uh, data so I would highly suggest that you leave that on the default AES encryption now we need to come up with a, a passphrase for our data to protect it because your encryption is only as strong as the passphrase if a hacker was to get hold of it if it's a very weak passphrase it won't take them very long to get at your data so I would suggest something with capital letters lowercase letters numbers symbols uh, a mix of all of these having said that for the purpose of this video I'm going to completely ignore my own advice and do something very simple so I'm just going to put in my highly secure passphrase and as you can see another nice touch it tells us the strength and mine is completely useless but it'll do for this because it's not a real backup it's just for demonstration purposes but for your when you're doing your data make sure that you use a nice strong and secure passphrase and when you're happy with it click next okay and you can see now we need to set our backup destination and this is why i had to put the usb stick in ahead of time so it would be detected here now the storage type by default it's on the one we want for this video and, and possibly the one you want as well which is local folder or drive but the beauty of duplicati is you can back up to lots and lots of different platforms so if you're not going to go with a, a local nas network attached storage device or a, a, a local um, usb hard drive you do have a lot of other options in here and the process is the backup process itself is effectively the same whatever you use so although we're going to do the the local option local storage you could select one of these if you'd sooner so you've got options like file transfer protocol the more secure secure file transfer protocol or secure shell as it's otherwise called um, you've got webdav there's several options in there you've also got all of these proprietary platforms so you could put your backup up on amazon's s3 cloud you could put it into dropbox you could have it on google drive there's microsoft options in there so there's a there's a good choice of options as to where you want your backup to be located so select the one that you want with the local backup option we then need to tell it where that is so obviously it's seeing the computer and my usb drive which is why i needed to plug that in ahead of time so i'm going to click the usb to tell it that's where i want to put my backups now potentially if this had been a network share you might have had to have entered a, a username and password in here but being a usb drive we don't need to do that now again if it had been a different platform like a cloud service there would be options here you might need to fill in to authenticate and connect with that account that you've set up and again that would be more relevant to test that that connection works but we can click it anyway um, and as you can see it just tells us that the connection works which being a, a directly connected usb stick i would hope so so click ok and then we can click next to proceed to the next screen right so another nice little touch along the top here it can you can see it's counting through the steps of completing this backup task so we're now up to step three which as you can see it's time to enter the source data so in other words select what we want to back up now usefully it's actually laid out our main folders for our user account here for us to get at very easily if you wanted to back up all of your current users information so all of these folders you could click the home directory and if i if i expand that you'll see 
that contains all of the folders belonging to that user. That unfortunately would bring in other settings and program information that you probably don't want, so I wouldn't tend to do that. I, I would tick the relevant folders that I want to back up here. If the computer was used by more than just you, so there's multiple users, you may want to come into computer and if you expand the C drive and users, you can actually see under here we've got the users on the computer, which on this one is just me, the Byte My Pi account, but if there was other users, you'd find their home directories on here and you could select the folders for them that you also possibly want to back up so that's where you'd find that if you wanted it but for the purpose of this video I'm just going to back up my documents, my music, my pictures, my videos and let's have what's on the desktop as well um, and that will do for demonstration purposes so when you've chosen the folders you want to back up and tick them click the next button Okay, so next up is the schedule. So we can choose now when we want the backups to run. So this is the part where we can get it to work automatically, which is fantastic because it's almost a, a set and forget. So we can get all this up and running and then Duplicati will take care of the backups for us. I mean, obviously from time to time, it's a good idea to come in and check that you can restore things and that it's all there's, there's no errors and problems, but effectively you can set it up and then automate it to to run the backups for you so if we look down the list we've got it's tick to start with to automatically run backups you could turn off that off if you wanted but i, I think that's a, a really nice option because backing up is a very tedious task so it's great that we can automate it it then shows us when the next or in this case the first time is that it's going to run the backup so we can change this if we don't like it. Currently it's going to be at 1 o'clock in the afternoon tomorrow. Um, and then it's going to run again every day. But as I say, if, if you weren't happy with that, you could select it and, and type in a new value or use the up and down arrows to, to change the time. Or also with the date we can do the same thing. Or if we click this drop down arrow here, we've got a nice little calendar. So we can actually select the date from there if we want to change it. Um, likewise we can change the frequency of when it runs so run again every one day by default but if that wasn't what you wanted you can customize it you can do minutes hours days weeks months whatever I'm going to just leave those as they are for now now we've also got these allowed days options down here so you can see by default it's ticked that every day is allowed but if you had something against Mondays you could take the tick out of that box um, but because I want it to run every day I'm just going to leave that as it is and click the next button. Okay last up step 5 of 5. So general options and it's talking about the remote volume size. Now what this does is to make it a bit more manageable it splits the backups into chunks and by default they're 50 megabytes each in size so I would just leave that as it is it, it works perfectly well. Um, now backup retention this is a bit more important you can choose to keep all of your backups so every time it runs a backup you can keep all of them or you can be a bit more selective so Certainly if your external drive or wherever you're backing up to is doesn't have loads of storage space, you may wish to choose how long you keep the backups for. So you've got various options down here. So you can delete backups that are older than and then set an option. You can keep a specific number of backups um, and then you've got... Um, basically custom and, and smart backup retention options now I'm just going to set this to keep a specific number of backups so I think a good option here is three so in other words that will keep the last three days worth of, of backups if we need to recover from those but obviously uh, choose this to, to suit what's best for you um, and then when you're happy with all of that we can click save and it's reminding me obviously that I use that, it really doesn't like that I use that weak pass phrase but uh, yours will obviously be much more secure so just click to continue. And that's it, we've configured our first backup so 
it's there ready and waiting it hasn't actually run yet because if you remember in when we went through and set it it will run automatically uh, tomorrow in fact it tells us there tomorrow at one o'clock um, what I'm going to do for the purpose of this video um, to effectively skip ahead in time as if that backup would run is click run now because we can do that manually at any point just to, to force it to, to run our backup so I'm going to click that now and as you can see it's found the files and the total file size and all of that good stuff and it's working its way through the progress bar at the top of the screen okay and that's it it's finished so you can see it says their last successful backup today at 6.31 p.m. And it's scheduled to, to run or again or still at tomorrow at uh, 1 o'clock for the daily backup. So that's the first backup run. Now you can set as many backups as you, as you want. You could um, come and create another new backup if you wanted to backup to a, a different external drive or a different remote location. Or even if you wanted to separate your data, so some data you back up to one place, other data you back up to another. So you can have as many backups as you want in here and, and set the, the various times. And, and just as we've gone through this, you can do that for, for your needs. Um, but for what we're doing here, I'll, I'll just do this, this one backup. Now if I click this downwards pointing arrow, we have options under here. So we could run the backup again. We can restore files from here we can do that configuration that I talked about earlier so you can edit the configuration that we've just set up or you could export it so that you could then import it into a, another instance of this if you wanted to keep a backup of your backup configurations backup of a backup or you can delete um, the backup that we've set uh, you've got advanced stuff about how it works on the, the back end with the database um, I wouldn't worry about getting into that if you if you're familiar with all that stuff you don't need to be watching this video um, this is handy the reporting so we can look at the log so effectively in here it will show if there are any problems or errors or anything it's not managed to to back up that will appear in here so it's a good place to look in the backup log uh, to check that everything's okay and that the backup did indeed run successfully Right, so let's close out of Duplicati and if we open File Explorer and now that I'm confident we've got that backup protecting us, if we have a look in our um, folders and let's say I go to Pictures and I've got a, let's have a, a cat photo because we're on YouTube after all. So let's say disaster struck and somehow our cat photo shock horror disappeared so it's gone let's even empty it from the recycle bin so it's completely gone and we really need that back because it's life and death obviously we need to get that next video out on on youtube full of cats so let's go back now now that we've deleted that Let's relaunch Duplicati. So if we come down in our, our taskbar, in fact, we can do it one of two ways. We could double click the Duplicati um, launcher there on the desktop, which would take us back into the Duplicati software. Or we can come down here to the taskbar and you'll see here we've got a Duplicati icon in our taskbar. So if we were to click that, we've got options here as well. And the one we obviously want is to open it. Okay, so here we are back in Duplicati on the home screen. I want to go to Restore to pull my backup back. So it asks us here where we want to restore our backup from. So I could select this top option to do a direct restore from backup files and then I could go through the wizard and manually locate where the backup files are. But there's no need to do that because Duplicati actually lists our backups for us so if I select this one down here remember I just called the backup backup and I can go from here now if I'd set up more than one backup so I was backing up to different platforms or different network shares or different USB external drives um, any 
scenario where I'd set up different backups, they would be listed here. But obviously I only created the one called backup. So I can make sure that's selected and click next. Okay, so now comes the part where we select the files we want to restore from our backup. So this top box here, restore from, if I click the drop down list, you can see I've only got the one backup at the moment, so I'm not exactly support for choice. But if the backup has been running for a while, older backups will appear in this list if you need to go back further. Now bear in mind when I set it up in this instance, it's only going to keep the last three backups, but you could have opted to keep more than that. And whatever option you chose, however many backups there are, they will show in this drop down list. Once you've selected the one that you want, you've got this option here to, if you know the, the name of a file, you can actually search for it. So that's a nice feature. And in fact, we can try that now because we know we're looking for our cat picture. So let's search for cat and click the search button. And sure enough, there it is within our pictures directory. We've got the cat JPEG. Now, if I didn't want to do that, um, say I was wanting to pull back an entire folder and not just looking for a, a single file, I can look down here in the, the box and obviously you'll see that these are the folders I asked Duplicati to back up for me. So all in my home directory and I asked for desktop documents, music, pictures and videos. So if I wanted to get that same cat photo the long way around, I can expand the pictures group and scroll down and you can see sure enough there is the cat JPEG so if I tick that and click continue and here it's going to ask us where we want to restore the file to so if you've lost them or deleted them accidentally you can pop it back in its original location or if you wanted it somewhere else you can choose this option here to pick a location and then browse your computer for where you want to put it to and again, you can choose to overwrite an existing file um, as it's been deleted. It's not there anyway, so that doesn't matter. Or if you wanted to be more cautious, you could save a different version of it with a, a different, uh, well, with a timestamp in the file name. So it differentiates the two. And then we've got the permissions option at the bottom. So we can tick this box here to restore the read write permissions that belong to the file or data that you're restoring, which is never a, a bad thing. So when you've selected the options that you're happy with, click the restore button. And you can see we've got this nice progress bar going along the top telling us it's restoring the files. And obviously it was only the one file, so it was nice and quick. And it gives us the message your files and folders have been restored successfully. So we can click the OK button. Well, as they say, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So we need to go to our file explorer and browse to our pictures and sure enough there we go there is our cat photo so if we bring that up a nice moggy for you to have a look at let's come out of that close that down i just wanted to quickly show you if we take a look inside our usb drive at our actual backup files you'll notice that it has split them down into those chunks that you could set in the backup configuration so it keeps everything at 50 megabytes or smaller as you can see here right and that's about it now just before we go let's have a quick look around the interface at uh, a few little bits that we haven't mentioned up here we've got this pause button so if we click here as it says to see the pause options You've got the facility within Duplicati to pause the software. So if you were doing some mission critical task that you didn't want this triggering and running in the background while you were doing it, you come in here and pause it. So if I say I wanted to pause it for 24 hours and OK that, and then I can either wait for the 24 hours to expire or come back here and click the play button to resume. We've got the throttle options here. So if you were using... Um, a connection over the internet this is a nice touch because you can select these and then choose your upload and download speeds so if you've not got a, a fantastic broadband connection you could throttle the bandwidth that Duplicati uses if you're backing up to a, a remote server so that would be done through here and then you can click OK 
Um, down here on the bottom right of the interface we've got options for visiting and finding out more about the Duplicati team. So we've got social media options if you were to click those or the Duplicati forum or GitHub which is the online repository where code is posted by developers um, particularly those of open source software so they're your options for those and then lastly we've got the about section here so it just tells you more about the project and the developers behind it and that's about it so we can close the Duplicati web browser and remember it is still running there in the taskbar in the background doing its job silently well that brings us to the end of this video I hope you now feel confident to create your backup plan and put it into action using the free and open source software that is Duplicati. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified when I post the next one, you can click on the bell icon. Thanks for watching and until next time, take care.